But anyway, we're going to be having a quick of you. And right now, we're going to invite these two persons to come on stage. We're going to invite Rene and Tashari. And this is our quicker view segment. And so what we're going to do in doing is asking you one question each. And you're going to answer, you know, the, to the best of your ability. And so we're going to ask Tashari. You are going to go. So, Tashari, I was sexually and emotionally abused. I am bitter and angry. I find it difficult to forgive my abuser. What is it that you would want to say to such a person? Okay, so um, first thing, it's not your fault why you were abused, right? And with abuse comes a lot of negative emotions, bitterness, fear, hurt. But you can bring all those emotions to God. Just be real with him, right? Bring it to him and he is able to completely heal you. The scripture says in Psalm 34 verse 18 that God is near to the brokenhearted and those who are crushed in spirit. So he understands the hurt and the pain that you are feeling. But just be real with him and just pour out your heart to him in prayer and he's able to heal you and even lead you to those who you can talk to, who can help you through the process. So just know that God cares, he cares and he loves you. So there's no need to blame yourself or, or to feel guilty or dirty. He can cleanse you and allow you to truly forgive and to truly be healed. Amen, amen. Put your hands together for Tashari. Amen. So Renee's question. Renee, Hi. how do I discover my passion in life? No, I believe that there are a multiplicity of ways for us to tap into what is our passion. God has given us such um, wisdom through persons who know us, through our leaders, through persons in authority who are around us. Very often, and I don't know if any of you have ever had that experience where somebody say, um, you can draw, man. You're an artist. And you look at yourself, but no, sir. Mm -mm, this is not nothing. And you brush it off. But what is happening in moments like those is that God is pointing out things that are within you that are shining out whether or not you're trying to get them out or not. And persons are seeing what it is that he has placed in you even before you see it. So that is one way. By what persons constantly say to you, you're very good at this. That thing, in the world we call it the talent, but it is very often also a passion. A thing that the Lord has placed on your heart for you to do. And you just enjoy doing it. You want to do it all night. You want to do it all day. And you don't feel tired when you're doing it. So some of you, your minds are going, oh, hmm, that's all I like mean, video games. Yes, you can have a passion for video games, for gaming. But there are many other passions that the Lord can give you. Other ways that you can find out, though, and I'm going to touch on the most obvious one last. Another is that you can take what are called psychometric tests. So these tests do similar things to what these persons that I just mentioned will do. But it does it in a shorter, more concise time frame. You click on a link, you answer to questions where it asks you, um, what is your favorite, so and so, what do you find that you do most often, and by the time you get to the end of that thing called a psychometric test, it shows you what you are very apt in, what you're very good at, and you might look at it and say, really, I never realized that reading was a thing, I never know that was something that I really, really love, but it is a thing. So that's a second way, through the voice of leaders and others around you who tell you those things that they see in you under God and through psychometric tests. And last, you can ask God to tell you what is your passion, tell you what it is that he has placed inside your heart to do and to do very well. And I'll tell you, similar to the two first factors that I shared, you'll find that it's something that you're doing very often. So I'll give you an example. When I was young, I loved to sing. So I have a vivid memory of walking around in the backyard, hanging up clothes and singing at the top of my lungs. But then, back then I thought I couldn't sing. So I never thought of it as anything. Little did I know that music ministry, singing was one of my passions. And God brought that out to me powerfully later down. He confirmed it to me as I asked him, God, what am I good at? You know, so he will do the same for you. Those are just three ways that we can touch on now. Wow, wow, wow. Powerful answer. Put your hands together for these wonderful ladies. Thank you so much, ladies. I can use, I would ask that we use the 
side stage there. All right. So we're going to invite Daniel and Darian to come at this time. Quickly, gentlemen, Darian and Daniel. Yeah, put your hands together for them as they come. Yeah, man. Passionate young men, powerful young men, purposeful young men. Hallelujah. So, my first question is going to go to Daniel. So, Daniel, can young men keep themselves sexually pure until marriage? Yes, it is possible. And you're going to give us, you know, two ways or reasons how they can keep themselves right. pure. So, to be honest, God... My friends who are married, you know, they tell me that when you are married, it's like a special grace that God gives you between you and your partner um, than when a man go out in the world and, you know, shock up with all different, you know, partners and such. Um, you're taking on their spirit unto you, but when God provides that wife for you, um, it's a special grace that God gives you between you and her. Wow, wow, powerful. Put your hands together for that answer, man. Solid. And so, Darian, homosexuality is wrong. If so, why? Is homosexuality wrong? If so, why? Two. Yeah, so the short answer to that is, it is wrong. This, it is a sin. It's a form of sin. And why is, it, why is it wrong? Because sin in any form, the Bible says, results in something called death. Now, we probably think about death as if just dying, you know, losing our existence mortally. But the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And the gift of God is eternal life. The opposite of eternal life is not just dying but it's an eternal death. God does not want us to die in our sin. And if it's homosexuality, if it's lying, if it's backbiting, if it's complete murmuring, the, all of them God sees as sin. And if you are found with sin when you die, you go to the same place as a homosexual, someone who never repents of that sin. So that God hates the sin. And will judge you for the sin. So you have an opportunity to make it right. By turning to the source of eternal life. Which is God. Amen, amen. Put your hands together for the gentlemen. Thank you so much gentlemen. God bless you. And so we have the next persons of Jane and Tashima. Put your hands together for Jane and Tashima as they come. Come on man, clap them, clap them. These are just some awesome answers that we are having and we just want to tell persons that you can go to our Passion and Purity books. We have 20 books that are their resource materials for you. And so you can go and get some of these questions and answers as resource material. Welcome ladies. So Janine, what are two things you do to stay connected to God and grow in Him? and maintain your purity as a virgin. Okay, so what I would do to grow closer to God to maintain my purity is um, just spend time in the Word of God because that's very important for me because when I read the Word of God, I can learn about the promises of God. I learn about who God is, his faithfulness. You know, I just learn about the goodness of God. And I realize that when I spend more time in the word, I worry about problems less because I can focus more on God. And, you know, I just, just learning more about God through the word, just spending time in the word. And also... What I realized that helps me is music. Listening to Christian music is very important for me because it removes the distractions from my life and it helps me to focus on God, helps me to focus on who he is. And uh, like music, it really affects me because for example, if 
I'm being weighed down by the troubles of school, schoolwork, having to do SBAs and those stuff, then I just plug in some music and it really just uplifts my soul. So that's, it's very important. And you know, when you're focusing on God, you won't have to care about um, when the enemy tries to distract you with the various sins, right? So it's very important to spend time in the word and listen to Christian music. Awesome, awesome, awesome answers. Yes, yeah, see, it? the appreciation is there. Tashima, I'm attracted to someone, okay, of the same sex as me. How do I deal with this? Okay, hello everyone. <laughs> um, okay, so if there's someone out there and you're asking a question like this, um, it's good that you're asking a question like this instead of trying to explore a little further because you, you somewhat know that this is wrong, so you're questioning it. And it's good that you're questioning something so you can get the help. It's important that you, you go to others that can help you. You might have parents or guidance counselors or ministers that can help you um, to navigate these type of questions that you have in your mind. And to be clear, it is wrong, it is very, very wrong <laughs> to have same-sex attraction and stuff like that. So if you have a question like that in your mind, you'd want to go to persons that will give you answers that line up with the Word of God. It's, it's important to know that you get the answers that line up with the Word of God. Are you yourself? You can ask God. You can ask that, you can pray, you can go into the word for yourself, and it will show you the answers that you need, right? So, so don't be afraid, don't try to explore what the enemy is trying to tell you, because this is wrong, and the enemy will try to play on these kind of mindsets. So what you want to do is to find answers and try to, you know, go into spaces where you know that you'll be encouraged to live a pure life. And the ultimate way that you will actually live a pure life and have a pure mind, a pure mind that is by the Holy Spirit. So once you receive the Holy Spirit, you, do, you will now then have the power to overcome this kind of mindset. You will now have a pure mind, and a pure mind will give you, give you pure actions and pure motives. So it's important that you, you don't let yourself wander with these thoughts. You try to get help. And you, you, you need to know that um, God, you're not too far from God, right? You might have these questions, but God is not afraid of your questions. God is not, God is not going to cast you away because you're a girl and you like a girl, or you're a guy and you like a guy. Go to God. He will help you. He has the answers for you, and he really wants you to live a life of purity. So you go and get the answer from God, basically. <laughs> amen, amen. Put your hands together for them. Wow, thank you so much, ladies. And we have our final person here, and she is someone that I know that if you have questions, you can go to her, and we want to thank her for her support. I am going to invite Angel Juliet, Miss Juliet Grant, to come at this time. Put your hands together for her. Come on, put your hands together for her as she comes. And this is really, really a good question that Auntie Julia will give you. Nothing hard, right? And I know you can answer any question. Really yeah, man, you have the Holy Spirit, man. You hey. can trust it. <laughs> All right, Auntie Julia. So the question I have is, what advice would you give to a teen who is hooked on secular music with some lewd lyrics? What advice would you give to a teen who is hooked on secular music with lewd lyrics? All right, so I would want to say to you that there is two armies in the earth, the army of God and the army of the devil. One causes you to sing a particular thing and the other causes you to sing a particular thing. The truth is that my love, my love the music out of road, it's nice. Yeah, my love it. But the truth is that is the lyrics is the problem. The lyrics is where the problem is. So if you recognize that you are loving the lewd music, it means that you're not on the army of God. 
you're in the army of the enemy. And because you're in the army of the enemy, you're going to work for him. So the lewd music is going to contaminate your inner man and causes you not to focus on your schoolwork. It causes you not to be able to handle people correctly because a lot of the music I'm, I'm hearing now is causing so much anger and so much rage and, and causing a lot of our young people not to be able to retain their schoolwork. So you have to make the choice. What do I want to listen to? What am I listening to? Is it helping me? Is it, is, is what, what I'm listening to, is it helping me to be a better person? When I hear a boss a boy skull and a girl must come give me sex, it speaks to the fact that um, you, are list, you are on the army of the devil and he's going to draw you into a place that is going to destroy you. So we love the, we love the beat of the music, but we're going to choose the lyrics that will give glory to God. Amen. Amen, amen. Put your hands together for her. Thank you so much. I can yes. share a scripture. Hold on. Let me just share a quick scripture verse from um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. So when you learn to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with a nice beat where you like. Eh? So we're not trying to take away your beat because young people are made for the vibes, eh? I would love the dancing thing. So, but, but then the lyrics now must aid you to walk in righteousness. Amen, amen. Put your hands together for Auntie Juliet. I'm telling you, Auntie Juliet seemed like she wanted to dance a while ago. Trust me, trust um, me. She ready to dance and everything. Watch her. You see where I go on or something? Me not try that. Me not try that at all. Thank you so much, Auntie Juliet. You're welcome. God bless you. Put your hands together again for all our panelists in that wonderful quick of you.